Hi everybody, it's that time of the year again. It's birthday time. This time it is my birthday and I am 51. I can't believe it. The year has gone super, super fast, but I'm happy to be celebrating with you again. And today I'm going to show you one of my most favorite dishes in the whole world. It's a starter, it's a main course. It can be eaten anywhere as street food in India, in Bombay, of course, and it's lamb frankie. And I'm sorry, I, I know a lot of you are vegetarian and prefer chicken, but for me, it has always been lamb. And whenever I'm in Bombay, that's the first thing I eat. So today I'm going to show you my version. I've tried to keep it as authentic as possible. So I hope this recipe helps you. So here we have everything ready. I've got half a kilo of lamb on the bone, and I've got the boneless pieces into tiny, tiny cubes, just like this. So if you just take one of your big pieces and you can cut them into tiny chunks, it just cooks faster that way. So typically for your lamb filling for the Frankie, you have to make the uh, lamb like boti style. So lots of onions, a little bit of tomato spices and you slow cook it till it kind of becomes a thick gravy. And in this wok like saucepan, I have got 100 ml of oil. <coughs> to which I'm going to add like three little stems of cinnamon just for flavor. And I've got one large onion, which is finely chopped. I'm going to now put this in. What I'd like to show you while the onions are browning is I've got a little bowl with four finger chilies just finely chopped and we need to just soak them in white vinegar. So when you put the Frankie together, they have this lovely sour taste. They need to just kind of be in the vinegar for 15 minutes, so you don't need to do it so much in advance. Now it's really simple to make the boti uh, for the Frankie. I have cut the lamb in small pieces and I've put a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of ginger garlic paste and a teaspoon of chili powder and half a teaspoon of turmeric just to flavor it. To this I'm just going to add another one teaspoon of ginger garlic which is homemade. Just let it cook with the onions for a minute. I've got two really small tomatoes which I'm going to just roughly cube uh, or just one large tomato will do. Before we add the lamb into the onions, let's first fry the masalas a bit. I've got 1 4 teaspoon of turmeric, 1 tablespoon of chili powder, 1 teaspoon of garam masala, 1 tablespoon of coriander powder, and half a teaspoon of Cuban powder. Let's fry this as well. I've allowed the masalas to fry for at least a minute with the onions. I'm going to now put the chopped tomatoes in. And you might think, why is she putting the tomatoes in before browning the meat? It's because I want the tomatoes to completely break down and make this mixture into mush first. Because once you put the lamb in and then the tomatoes, it takes longer for the tomatoes to actually become gravy. So with the help of my spatula, I'm just going to release the juice and let the masala cook with it. And that this will work faster actually. If you don't have the patience to do this over the hob, you can do this whole step in the pressure cooker, put your lamb in, put a tiny bit of water and let it cook in the pressure cooker for 10 minutes and that's faster. But I'm just showing you the authentic way to slow cook the lamb. It's been a good three to four minutes and come here and have a look at what I'm doing. So a lot of the tomato has already become mush and with my spatula I am just breaking it further down into the pan and releasing the pulp. This is just so that you don't have bits of tomato coming in your mouth. It's only there to bulk up your gravy. This is the mixture I was after. It's time to put the lamb in. Now I'm cooking this with the bowl because the best flavor comes from lamb on the bowl. So 
This will take a good half an hour to 45 minutes at least for the lamb to cook really tender. And like I said, you're welcome to pressure cook this. It will just make it faster. It's important to kind of coat all the lamb pieces with the masala. And then we put a tiny bit of water, put the lid on and let it steam cook on a slow flame. I've already put salt into the lamb, so I'm not going to put any right now. But when we flavor it further, halfway through, I'll check for the seasoning. Time to put a bit of water in. I would say around one cup should do it. I mean, you can always top it up if your lamb hasn't cooked and you still need to slow cook it later. Let's just stir it in make it like soupy now that the mixture is come to a boil i'm happy to put the lid on and let's put the flame to medium low and you can see that the lamb is kind of steaming and cooking in its own juices and it's going to completely reduce and become really thick and rich and tasty so let's come back and a while but in the meantime let's go to the table and start making the chapatis for your Frankie. The most important thing which to date I have struggled I have to say but this time I'm determined to get it right. Okay so it's it's good to take a nice big broad bowl to which I've added one teaspoon of fine salt. I'm going to add one cup of wheat flour and this is your typical chapati flour. I'm going to add one cup of this and I'm going to add two cups of plain flour which is your all-purpose flour or maida as you call it. Okay, this is your one cup and this is your second cup. Make sure you have washed your hands before you put your hands in the dough. So we're going to start with two tablespoons of oil into your flour mix and Gently just kind of mix it around and start putting water into your flour. Typically we want a soft dough. Yep, our dough is ready. It's just important to knead it a bit first and then we are just going to allow it to rest for 15 minutes at least before we start rolling them out. That will be your first step. So let's cover it and let it rest. I got it. Let it rest for 15 minutes. See you back. Now the rotis for the Frankie has to be done in two steps. Now this is the hard bit. The lamb is cooking still. Um, we are going to come back to the roti and first half cook them and let's go and start rolling them out. Please don't hold me um, hostage for not having perfectly round rotis. It's one of my weaknesses. I'll do my best but my family don't mind as long as the food tastes is good. I've got half a cup of flour ready just to kind of sprinkle some on the chopping board and I prefer to actually roll it out on chopping board such as this because there's less chance of the dough actually sticking and then you don't use as much flour and also for the roti because you want it a nice big round and not very thin you need to take a good size um, bowl of it and then just roll it and do it exactly as you would with your chapati really so let's just keep a tiny bit of flour and start rolling this out. What I should have shown you before I started rolling it out is just kind of switch on your tawa or in this case this is my non-stick frying pan. A beautiful round roti. Check it out! And it goes into the non-stick and just lay it flat and we're only going to half cook it. turn it the other way just kind of press it down we cook it properly when we actually start putting the egg mix before we put the lamb so this is the first roti done and actually when I make chapatis it doesn't come up so much and now with the Frankie rotis it is irony isn't it let me show you the lamb Oh my god, just have a look how beautiful that looks. 
and we want all of this juice to be reduced as much as possible and for it to stick to the lamb and thicken really. Let's cover it back and let's start rolling out the second roti. Done for the second one, another perfect round shape, well done! And in it goes, let's half cook this one too. And it's actually managed to stay really soft, look. <laughs> now generally when we eat Frankie, we all know that the roti is coated in egg. Now vegetarians don't need to do that because most vegetarians wouldn't eat egg. But those who eat it with chicken and lamb, this is the next step to your half cooked roti. I'm just going to break two eggs with half a teaspoon of salt and just slightly whisk it and let's cook the roti with the egg now. So it's almost like baida roti really, but not too much egg. So let's start with the first roti. Um, I've got the frying pan which is on. I'm just gonna keep a wee bit of butter and then put the roti back on. Just kind of let it roll around a bit. Turn it around and I have whisked the egg mix and I'm just going to gently pour out some. Just try and spread it quickly as you can. And don't worry if it goes outside, it's kind of meant to. You can just get it all back in. And that's why we need a non-stick pan. Let's turn it. Obviously, the egg side up first. Let's start putting it together. Right. This is exciting now. Just wait. Okay, so your typical masalas that go over your lamb, you use chaat masala and you also get frankie masala. Now this comes ready-made in bottles, but essentially it's all your masalas like chili powder, turmeric, uh, cumin, coriander, black pepper powder, uh, somph and uh, anardana powder which is pomegranate seed powder. It's all kind of a mixture of that and it comes ready made so I just use that really. The real taste and flavour is in the lamb and how you put it all together. So let's spoon a few pieces right across and I wouldn't really go all the way down. Be generous. I'm going to keep a little bit of chaat masala first, just like the bahiyas do. A little bit of the Frankie powder, if I can open it, finally. There we go. A teaspoon of onion. Now, if you don't like onion, obviously, skip this step. A generous amount of chilies. We love chilies, so no problem there. A bit of vinegar. Oh my God. I'm salivating as I'm doing this. I've taken a piece of foil just so that I can secure it like a Frankie. Up, side, roll, roll, roll. There we go. I'm going to stop talking now. I'm actually going to take a nice big bite. Mm. 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 Oh my god. Thank you for all those who kind of suggested it to me. I completely forgot about it and I'm so happy I got to do this as a birthday vlog. My most favorite street food, Black Frankie, it has to be. And I'll see you back again sometime in the future. Till then, goodbye. Love you all. Thank you again. Bye.